don't know. So I don't know if there's anything else coming, but let me say hi. Let me also share my screen. Welcome to my session on the state of the Java metrics libraries. Here we go. Um, yeah, my name um, is Fabian. I work at um, Instana. Instana is an a monitoring company, an application monitoring company. And in the next um, in the next 40 minutes or so, I'm going to show you, give you an overview of um, Java metrics libraries. Um, maybe a little disclaimer, I am also as a hobby on my own time, maintainer of one of these libraries and the maintainer of the Prometheus Java client. But obviously I'm not going to use this talk just to promote my own library. I'm going to just give you an overview, okay? So let's get started. Um, the first slide is more for reference if you watch this later on YouTube or so and want to see what, what we were talking about. So I'm going to show you Micrometer, of course, and then obviously the Prometheus Java client library, which is the one where I am the maintainer, and uh, drop wizard metrics. And then we are going to look into two standards. One is uh, the microprofile standard, and one is the open telemetry metrics standard. So let me quickly set my alarm clock here so that I know that I'm in time. Okay, good. And um, I'm going to show you code examples for each of these things. Um, if you want to see this code, uh, uh, try this code at home. I just published everything on GitHub, pushed it to my GitHub uh, on the JCon 2021 repository. So everything I'm going to show you now, you will also find there. Okay, let's get started. So, um, as an example application, I created a little REST service. So let's find this here, um, greeter servlet. So it's basically a hello world REST application. So maybe we can try it first. It's also running somewhere in the background. So I can say slash hello slash Olivia, for example, and then it responds with a greeting, hello Olivia. If I say if I call it with a name that it doesn't know, like for example, hello Fabian, then it just returns an HTTP 500 internal server error, right? And so the way this works, I have this greeter servlet here. If everything goes well, I just return the greeting. If there is this greeting not found exception, I return an error code. So, and what we are going to do, we are going to instrument this thing with um, metrics with all the different libraries and standards and on the way I will explain you the differences between these things. So maybe I mean as a like what's the <clears throat> focus of this talk so obviously these libraries have a lot of points where they differ so for example many of them come with support for some specific libraries or frameworks and so on but I think this is not a good way for a generic like comparison because if you use a specific library, for example, and you want to know if this metric li library supports it, then I guess you can look this up in the documentation yourself, right? So um, I'm going really to focus on the basics and the basics are you have this simple uh, um, REST service here and you want to create a monitoring dashboard for this service. And the monitoring dashboard we are going to create is a standard dashboard containing request rate, error rate, and duration. So this, this is the basics for monitoring REST services. And this is what we're going to look into. If you're looking for advanced features, I think you can look up yourself which of the libraries provides best the specific like use case that, that you, you are looking for. Okay, good. And as a monitoring tool, I'm going to use Prometheus in all of the examples. Um, some of the libraries like Micrometer are not specific for Prometheus, so you can use Micrometer with lots of different monitoring tools, but I think Prometheus is kind of the most common, many people know how it works, and so I think it's good to use this as an example throughout this presentation. Okay, so let's get started, let's instrument this thing. Um, I um, originally planned to code this live, but then I tried it and I saw that if we do the live coding for the five different frameworks, it takes too long. And so I have uh, prepared code now. So the first example I'm going to show you is with the Prometheus client library. If you look at the uh, Maven dependencies needed, it's this one here, the IO Prometheus simple client. So this one is basically the API that you use for instrumenting your code. And then, as you might know, Prometheus scrapes these metrics via HTTP. 
And um, there are many way, different ways how to expose metrics with an HVP endpoint. One of the ways is this simple client servlet, which is just a servlet that you can configure in your application. And then the servlet makes the metrics available to Prometheus. And then most of the libraries also provide out of the box support for JMX metrics, like the free heap space available and so forth. And in the Prometheus Java client, this is in this package simple client hotspot. You initialize it with a line of code and then you get these metrics as well. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, I want to create a counter counting how often this service is called. In code, it looks fairly simple. So we basically have um, our counter here, give it a name, help message, I use the HTTP status code as a label so that we see which calls um, resulted in HTTP status 500, which of them resulted in HTTP status 200, right? And I register that counter. And then basically um, down here, I added a finally block where I just uh, take the status code as a label and increment the counter. I got this up and running already. So I have a little you know, client running over here that constantly fires requests against my endpoint so that I have a bit of um, traffic. And if I look at the Prometheus server and just, um, oops, what was that? Let's copy the name of this metric up here, this one. So if I just copy this name of the metric in this uh, um, query interface of the Prometheus server, we see how it looks like. So we have two instances of this metric, one for HTTP status 200, one for HTTP status 500. And we saw see that since I started this on my local laptop, we had about 22,000 calls resulting in HTTP status 200 and about 4,400 resulting in HTTP status 500. And what's really interesting, what I always find surprising if, if, if I see this, and um, this counter itself, of course, has little value. I mean, why, why is it important to know that this was called 22,000 times? But obviously, Prometheus is a time series database. So it doesn't only have the current value, it also has the history of previously recorded values. And you can, for example, say, I want to look at the last five minutes, and then you see all the values recorded in the last five minutes. And then the Prometheus query language has functions. There is, for example, a rate function, which takes this time interval and then gives you the per second increase rate. So from that, you see in the last five minutes, I had about 10 requests per second resulting in HTTP status 200, and I had about two requests per second resulting in HTTP status 500. And then if I just want to aggregate this, you know, have the total um, load on my uh, system, there's a method called or a function called sum, right? So I can sum these things up. And then it tells me my total load on the system is about 12 requests per second. And then I can take such a query, dump it into a Grafana dashboard, and it shows me that my um, client actually produces a pretty stable request rate of 12 requests per second constantly firing against my endpoint. Okay. And actually, with the error rate, it's uh, similar. So we have the uh, um, we have the requests resulting in HTTP status 500. We have the total requests. So if we divide them by each other, we see that actually we have a pretty constant error rate of about 16% of the calls failing with HTTP status 500. Okay, so this. Um, is fairly easy, fairly straightforward. And I always find it fascinating because you see like with a extremely simple thing with just a counter, you already get two thirds of what you need in a dashboard when monitoring microservices. So that's cool. The only thing that's missing in order to have a complete dashboard is basically the duration. So you want to know the latency, you want to know how long does it take for your service to respond. So let's add uh, the duration. And in the Prometheus Java client library, there are actually multiple ways to do this. And the first thing we are going to try is um, something that in Prometheus terminology is called a summary, right? So a summary is a metric with quantiles. So I have the 50th percentile here, the 95th, the 99th. So this is, uh, I will show you in a minute what exactly that means, right? So I registered these latency quantile metric. And then in my finally block down here, uh, so or in, in the beginning, I just take the timestamp when it starts. In the finally block, I just calculate the duration in seconds, how long it took. 
and then I just record um, the duration with the HTTP status code as a label. So if we look in Prometheus, how this thing then looks like, it looks like this. So basically what that means is like the 95th percentile, for example, what that means is if we look, um, if we look at the, um, if you look at the requests resulting in HTTP status 200, then 95% of them responded faster than 267 um, milliseconds, and 5% of them responded slower than 267 milliseconds, right? Or here we see 99% of the calls were faster than 285 milliseconds, and only 1% was slower than 285 milliseconds, and so on, right? And obviously you can, um, Obviously, you can take um, this metric now and dump it into a um, Grafana dashboard, and then you get an overview of your percentiles. So in that case, I visualized them with um, the HTTP status 500, and we see the green line is our 50th percentile, our median. So half of the calls were faster than this, half of the calls slower than this, and then up here is the 95th and the 99th percentile, right? Okay, and this already gives us a good indication of the latencies of um, how fast my service responds. However, there are some issues with measuring duration like this, like I have shown you, right? And I actually prepared a slide to uh, talk to you a bit about these issues. So let's go into presentation mode. Well, first of all, I um, want to say that percentiles or quantiles are a good way for representing um, latencies in a system, right? So um, these quantiles pretty much describe the behavior of your system from a client's perspective. So if you have a guarantee that 95% uh, of your calls are faster than 180 milliseconds, then this is something that you can agree on with the clients consuming your service. And this is a, a good guarantee that you can use as a basis for defining your service level objectives. And that's also a good um, service level indicator for defining alerts, like if more than 1% of my calls is slower than 100 milliseconds for five minutes, I want to be alerted. So that's a kind of typical alert that you would find in, in monitoring, right? However, the drawback is that um, you cannot aggregate multiple quantiles. So for example, if you have uh, this information that 95% of the calls with HTTP status 200 were faster than 180 milliseconds, and 95% of my calls with HTTP status 500 were faster than 240 milliseconds, then there is no way to aggregate this and know the overall latency of your system, right? Because much information is missing. You don't know the distribution of the observations. You don't know the, how many these are and, and these things, right? So that's bad because you cannot aggregate these values. And that's even worse, like if it's, if it's just about status codes, maybe you could have a like aggregated thing re being reported by your library yourself. But if you imagine you have a service that scales out and you have multiple instances of your service and you want to know the overall um, latency that you provide with this, then having some way to aggregate these things in your monitoring tool is necessary. So what can we do about it? Is there a better way to monitor um, latency? And there is. And it's actually pretty simple as well. So everybody understands that histograms, right? So I guess you know what a histogram is. So for example, this one here shows that 15 calls were faster than 150 milliseconds, but slower than 175 milliseconds and so forth. And the great thing about histograms is you can aggregate them. So if you have two histograms and if they have the same buckets, of course, so let's say one of them represents the calls with HTTP status 200, one of them represents the calls with HTTP status 500. Then if you want the total aggregated histogram, it's fairly easy. You just add up the individual numbers and then you have a total aggregated histogram. And that's pretty cool because then you can collect latency histograms from different instances, aggregate them on the server and you get a total understanding of the latency. And it gets even better because uh, Prometheus actually has a histogram quantile function. And with this function, you can calculate a quantile value based on a histogram. So the way this works is, of course, you can now go ahead and say, 
okay, 95% of my observations were somewhere left of this bucket and 5% of my observations were somewhere right of this bucket. So my 95th percentile must be somewhere in this bucket, right? And you don't know exactly where it is, but you can use this for an estimation and then you get some like a, a quantile value, which is just an estimation, but which in many cases is good enough for um, monitoring. So let's look at how this looks like in code. Um, I created a histogram here. API is again, super simple. So I gave it a name. I defined a couple of buckets, again, use the status code as a label. And then just like I report, re, uh, recorded my duration in the, in the quantiles thing, I can as well record my duration in the histogram. And if we look at uh, in Prometheus, how this looks like, how the underlying data looks like, we will see that we get a couple of buckets, the ones that we defined. And yeah, what that means is, for example, here, this one here, um, with HTTP status 200, um, we observed 23,440 calls that were faster than 250 milliseconds, right? And so many calls faster than 262.5 milliseconds and so forth, right? So this is how buckets are represented in the raw Prometheus metrics format. And then, of course, you can go ahead and uh, dump this histogram into a Grafana dashboard, visualize it, and now it looks like this. Um, as a side note, I, I mean, won't elaborate on this much, but I, I thought it's interesting to put this um, into, the, into the talk as well. What you see here is that this histogram is not just one type of distribution. It's kind of two distributions merged together into one histogram. And this is something that you actually see often in monitoring. And the reason why it looks like that is because of the way I implemented the greeter library. So the greeter library has an optimization. It loads, it can load greetings from a cache. And when the greetings are loaded from a cache, they are loaded pretty quickly. And that's what you see on the left, like the quick responses here. If it's a cache miss, uh, the name has to be forwarded to a database to load the greeting from there. And these are the calls on the right. They are loaded from the database and therefore they are slower. And that's actually, I find it actually interesting because this type of like how your distribution actually works is something that you can only see when you actually visualize the histogram. You cannot see these, this behavior if you just look at an aggregated percentile value. So. Visualizing the histogram at some point is, of course, uh, something that you should consider. And yeah, then, of course, I can uh, run this histogram quantile function on top of this aggregated histogram up here, and then again get my quantile values. And they, um, yeah, and now these quantile values represent the aggregated thing, um, including HTTP status 200 and HTTP status 500. Okay, so. That was a very quick introduction into how to build a standard monitoring dashboard. We had request rate, error rate, and duration. And for duration, we saw a couple of different approaches, uh, measuring quantiles and measuring histograms and what you can do with them. And this was also at the same time an introduction to the Prometheus uh, client library, but we will now use this knowledge and see how we can do similar things in other libraries. Maybe as a side note, before we switch to the next one, um, obviously measuring you know, HTTP requests is something that is very common that you want to do often. And so actually most or all of these um, libraries have ways so that you do not need to do this in code. You can also configure this so it, that it happens under the hood automatically. So in terms of the Prometheus um, Java client, there is a servlet filter that you could use. So you could as well configure a servlet filter and the servlet filter would just time all the matching HTTP requests automatically. And then you would not need to put counters and, and histograms in each of your REST calls. But of course, in this demo, I show you the explicit code because we want to understand what's actually going on. And as soon as you start instrumenting your own business logic, I think you would need um, explicit code as well. Okay. so. Let's move on to the next library. And the next one I want to show you is the Micrometer library. So Micrometer is a project that was created as part of Spring when Spring Boot 
two, I think, was uh, um, developed. And micrometer has maybe let's start with the Maven dependencies first. So micrometer has a different philosophy. Micrometer is more like a generic metrics API in Java. And then you can hook in support for multiple monitoring systems. So it's not specific to Prometheus, right? And so the way this looks like as in, in terms of Maven dependencies in a Spring application, um, in, in Spring, the micrometer API is part of this, uh, no, this one here is part of the actuator framework. And then in order to expose the metrics at runtime for a Prometheus server, you basically hook in this Prometheus uh, meter registry. And there are other meter registries for other monitoring tools as well. Okay, and then you have your application properties where you just need to activate your endpoint so that Prometheus is actually exported and then you are good to go. So. Let's look at the code. How does instrumentation look like? So this is basically, again, my greeting REST service in that case, case written as a Spring Boot application. What we see here, I introduced a counter and a timer, right? So make this a bit bigger. So the counter basically is, um, as expected, has a name, we give it the HTTP status as a tag. And every time we call this endpoint, we increment the counter. And then we have a timer, also give it a name, give it the HTTP status as a tag. And every time this method is called, we um, record the current, uh, we record the duration, okay? So um, counter is basically, it's, it's pretty clear what it does, the same as with the Prometheus library. Timer is of course a generic concept in the API. And now that we know that there are different ways how to measure times and latencies uh, in monitoring, it might be interesting to have a look what's actually under the hood when we create a timer. Is it more like a summary type of thing where we get latencies and so forth, or is it more like a histogram? And the answer is this timer interface supports all of it. So basically it depends on your configuration, right? You can put your configuration, I think, in the application properties, but I put it in code up here. So I configured the timer in a way that it just exposes everything. So I created a couple of percentiles, the 50th, 95th, and 99th. And I also said it should expose a histogram, right? And if we now, if we now look at the metrics that it exposes, I think it's here exposed under the slash actuator slash Prometheus endpoint, what we see is uh, that actually this thing has a couple of quantiles, like 50% of my calls faster than that and, and so on, right? But it also has a couple of buckets for a histogram. Um, maybe as a side note, because that's interesting as well, where do these buckets come from? Because as you remember in the Prometheus example, I specified the buckets explicitly. You can, of course, specify buckets explicitly in micrometer as well. But in that case, I didn't do it. And micrometer used some type of default buckets. And the question is, what are these default buckets? Where do they come from? And, and what do they measure? And the idea, and I actually like this idea, that's why I'm going to show it to you, is that by default, this thing creates a couple of buckets for each order of magnitude. Right? So it, it might be that you're measuring something that takes milliseconds. right? And in, for that case, it creates a couple of backup cup buckets for one millisecond, two milliseconds, three, and so forth, up to 10. Right? So it might be that this is far too, too, too quick for you. You are measuring tens of milliseconds. right? And for that case, it gives you a couple of buckets like with 10, 20, and so on, up to um, 100 milliseconds. So maybe this is even too slow, uh, too fast for you, and you're measuring hundreds of milliseconds, right? And there you get these buckets here going from 100, 200, and so forth to 1,000 milliseconds. Or maybe that is still too fast for you, and you're measuring seconds. So we have a couple of buckets between 1 and 10 seconds, right? And then we have a couple of final ones between 10 and 30 seconds. If it's uh, more than 30 seconds, I'm afraid you need to specify uh, your buckets yourself. So that's where the typical response time of, of, of REST services ends, right? And the interesting thing about this is you can basically use it if you have no clue how quick your REST service is, because whatever the order of magnitude is, you would likely have a couple of buckets that make sense for you. The thing you need to be careful about is that 
obviously these buckets don't have the same size. They are exponentially growing. And so it's a bit hard to interpret this histogram if you just visualize it as a histogram. So I created an example here. If you just dump this histogram into Grafana and visualize it as it is, it has a bit of a misleading you know, uh, shape because what it actually shows is the same distribution that we saw here in the Prometheus library. But if you look at it here, it looks like there are a lot more calls in this bucket, but this is not because there are actually more calls. It's just because the bucket is larger and therefore more calls end up in this bucket, right? And so this hill being higher doesn't mean there are more calls than on the left side. It's just that the resolution is not so fine grained the more you go to the right. So basically this type of histogram is hard to understand if you really try to visualize it. And I think it's not the goal. So the goal is more than you, that you use it internally aggregated and calculate um, latencies out of that, right? And that's something I can do. So I, again, added the histograms for HTTP status 200 and HTTP status 500, used this histogram quantile function, and then I got these um, quantile values. They are not as precise as in my previous example, because obviously in the order of magnitude where I have my calls here, there are not so many buckets. And if you have less buckets, this estimation is not so precise, but at least it's something to start with. So you can do this without any prior knowledge. Okay, so maybe as a last uh, thing, I mean, I know that Spring people do not love to write Java code so much. Spring people love to write their code more in terms of annotations. And obviously as mic micrometer comes out of Spring, you can do all the things that I showed you in annotations as well. So for example, if you annotate your method with timed, you can configure all the things regarding your timer, whether you want a histogram, percentiles, and so forth. And then in the actual implementation of your method, you can focus on your business logic and it will be timed automatically. So that's probably how most people will use Micrometer. I just wanted to show you the explicit code first so that it's better comparison with the, with the other libraries, okay? And maybe a last note, um, so it comes out of the Spring um, ecosystem, but um, recently it has been adopted by a couple of other frameworks as well. So Quarkus famously shifted from MicroProfile to Micrometer. Um, things like Micronaut use Micrometer and so on. So it actually has a lot of adoption across basically all current um, Java frameworks, right? Okay, so that was Micrometer. Let's uh, head over to the last one, Drop Wizard. So Drop Wizard metrics is actually the oldest one. So I'm uh, has been around for, for a longer time now, <clears throat> comes obviously out of the Pro Drop Wizard project. And now I think we have seen already how these things work. So we can take this a bit more quickly. So again, we have a counter and we have a histogram, right? Let's zoom in a little bit so that you see this, right? Initialize them with a name, maybe I can, copy that name over there. And then we increment the counter whenever this thing is called and we update the histogram with the current duration, okay? So one thing that maybe you realize is that in this counter or in this histogram, we do not use the HTTP status as a label here. And the reason is that um, drop wizard metrics does not support labels. So if you want to have like count HTTP status 200 and HTTP status 500 independently, in drop wizard metrics, you would create two different counters and not just one counter with two labels, right? Um, the other thing that's also interesting is kind of a terminology mismatch, because if you look at how this request duration is defined, it's actually called a histogram in terms of the drop wizard uh, name of the Java class, but in terms of Prometheus terminology, it is not actually a histogram. So if you look at the um, what's, what is actually exported, let's find this somewhere here, it's actually more like a summary, right? You get these values, the quantiles and so forth, 50, 75, and so on. I think that's even hard-coded which ones you get, and you will not get a histogram with buckets. That's obviously not good if your intention is to aggregate latencies across multiple instances. And that's in general something like with Drop Wizard. I think Drop Wizard 
was created with a focus on having simple dashboards that just visualize directly the data that a drop visit application exp exposes. And if you really want to directly visualize the data, then having readily aggregated quantiles makes sense. And also drop visit supports things like the request rate that we um, calculated at the beginning of the talk. You can also calculate this in the drop visit um, library directly and expose it as an aggregated metric and so on. So if, if you have a really dumb dashboard that just visualizes whatever it gets from the application, then these things are good. If you have something like Prometheus, where you want to do aggregation yourself across labels or maybe across histograms and so forth, then this approach, approach is obviously a bit limited, right? Okay. So, and by the way, um, drop visit, of course, as well supports annotations. So instead of having a timer and a counter in your actual Java code, you can just say this method should be counted and this method should be timed, and then it works as well. Good. So that was a quick um, peek into three of the Java metrics libraries um, drop visit, uh, micrometer, and the Prometheus Java client. The things remaining are the two standards. And the first one I want to show you is micro profile metrics. So micro profile is actually, um, you know, a Java standard body under the Eclipse Foundation. And when they created their uh, metrics standard, they basically looked into like what, what's out there, what's, what's, what's most commonly used, what's available. And obviously at that time, um, drop wizard metrics was the most commonly used um, library. And I think in, in terms of projects using it as a Maven dependency, it still is, it has a lot of, lot of users out there. And so what the uh, standardization body did was they basically looked at uh, drop wizard and used this as a basis for their standard basically moving drop wizard API into this org eclipse microprofile metrics um, package, right? They also extended it a bit. So if you look at the counter here or the histogram here, they now support actual tags, right? So I have a tag here with my HTTP status code and I can use it over here. So that's a good improvement. However, you need to be careful they didn't you know, resolve this naming mismatch between what Rob Mizzard calls a histogram and what um, Prometheus calls a histogram, right? So if you if you create a histogram type um, micro profile metric, then if you look at what's actually being exported, I think I have it over here, then yeah, what you see, you get the labels, HTTP status 500, HTTP status 200. So that's good, but you still get pre-aggregated quantile values and you do not get things like buckets and so on, right? So this kind of missing ways of aggregating latencies over multiple instances. And the other thing that micro, my, uh, micrometer has this nice um, separation between the actual metrics API and the nice hook where you can hook in your own monitoring tool and so forth. So this is uh, actually a reason why Many of the projects that traditionally use microprofile, like Quarkus, for example, decided to move away from microprofile metrics recently and adopt micrometer instead, right? And, and also the um, standardization body of the uh, microprofile metrics, they see that as well. And so there is currently discussion going on with the next release of microprofile to move away from this standardized drop visitor type of approach and to go more into a like approach where the things that micrometer has are respected more. It's currently like the initial discussions. I mean, it's not clear whether this will be a breaking change or whether we can kind of include this somehow into a, a common API that's not breaking and so forth. But uh, it's, it's expected that micro profile metrics will in the near future move a bit more towards what we, what we see in micrometer. And of course, Drop wizard annotations have also been ported into microprofile, are now microprofile annotations timed and counted, is there just like in drop wizard. So, last thing, uh, last standard is open telemetry. So, open telemetry is pretty new and it has a lot of traction in the distributed tracing community. So, if you want to observe like which, how network calls are processed throughout a distributed system, um, 
open telemetry is basically the standard that everyone is jumping onto right now. But of course, open telemetry does not only have distributed tracing, it has their metrics and, and logging as well. Um, these things are a bit behind. So actually, it, what, what I show you is, is fairly new because open telemetry metrics was only finalized a couple of weeks ago. And I think this Java implementation that I found on their GitHub is still like marked as alpha initial test or something. But uh, it's enough to have a quick look and to see where this is going. And it actually looks good. I must say, right? So again, I tried to implement this standard dashboard with a counter and a histogram, right? You actually have different types of counters, longs and doubles and so on, and for histograms as well, which is nice. And then this thing supports labels. So in that case, they are called attributes. So I can use a HTTP status as an attribute, right? And if this thing is called histogram, it actually is a histogram in Prometheus terminology. So what you see here, a couple of buckets coming out of that, right? So that's looking good. I don't know exactly where these buckets are coming from. If, if this is something standardized in open telemetry metrics, or if it's just something that happens to be in the alpha version of the Java library, I don't know, right? So basically, um, open telemetry metrics is, way too new to have adoption in the in the Java world. So it's, uh, I guess nobody's using this in production right now, but it looks promising. They have a few promising approaches as well, like um, introducing exemplars and so on. And it's definitely worthwhile to keep an eye on because maybe in a couple of months or whatever from now, this gets more stable, gets more traction, people jumping on it, and then this would become a relevant uh, standard also in the, in the Java metrics world. So let's see, let's see how this goes. Okay, so that was my overview of Prometheus Client Library, um, Micrometer and Drop Wizard, and the two standards, um, MicroProfile and Open Telemetry. I have a final slide to wrap this up before we open for questions. So a couple of words beyond the uh, pure API aspect of it. Um, first, Micrometer. I mean, actually, it's so widespread right now that the chances are that your framework that you are using for building your Java applications has Micrometer built in anyway, right? It has been developed as part of Spring Boot, but as I have said, also other frameworks like Quarkus adopted Micrometer, Micronaut adopted a Micrometer, and I guess others as well. Um, the general philosophy that also resonates well with <clears throat> the other frameworks is that it's a vendor neutral API. It also internally has a nice internal API where you can create your own registries for your own monitoring tool. So there is one for Prometheus, obviously, but there are a couple of more for all types of other monitoring systems. And also Micrometer is the library that has the best funding, I must say, as a, as a developer of one of these. So, I mean, the Prometheus Java client library and drop wizard metrics are basically things that people do in their, on their own time, like as a hobby, right? Micrometer, I think Pivotal even like pays people working on Micrometer. So that's definitely an advantage, right? And so if you're using one of these Java frameworks or another framework that uh, has Micrometer included, then I would not see any reason not to use it. So that's definitely the safe bet because everyone's using it. Um, if you look at the Prometheus Java client library, obviously one of the differences is that this is originally coming out of the Prometheus ecosystem. So there are, I mean, what I showed you in this talk was basically generic microservice monitoring dashboards, right? Re request rate, error rate, duration. And hopefully you can do this with all of these libraries. But of course, Prometheus has a couple of features that are more specific to Prometheus as a monitoring tool, like the additional types that came with open metrics or like the exemplars that help you link uh, metrics with distributed traces and so forth. And obviously as the Prometheus Java client library comes out of the Prometheus ecosystem, these things are supported best in in this library. So if you're looking to really integrate well with the Prometheus server and really <clears throat> use all the features that it has, you will probably have the most complete implementation in, in, in this library, including in the next couple of months, I will probably implement the new experimental exponentially growing histograms in Prometheus. Now, let's see. 
And also it's a lot more lightweight. So it's not a framework, no annotations that are processed and so forth. It's a plain Java library. Drop Wizard, of course, has been around for longer than the other ones, um, has of course been adopted by a lot of projects over time. It's well established, it's very stable because it has been around for a long time. And also there's a good ecosystem of people who, who used it over time and adopted it. And so if you find that the library or the tool or the metrics, the, uh, the thing you're using supports Drop Wizard metrics, I would not see any reason not to use it. I mean, it's definitely good and stable, but if you are waiting for new features to be developed, I would be a bit careful because this project currently lacks a bit of innovation. If you are looking for being becoming contributor to one of these libraries, I think the Drop Wizard maintainers will be really happy to welcome you on board. So if you think, ah, come on, I will in uh, implement the histograms for them or labels for them, then definitely reach out to them. They will be happy to, to onboard you. Um, okay, and then looking at the two standards, uh, micro profile is a bit in a, I would say transition phase currently. So uh, going away from this focus on standardizing the Drop Wizard API to including micrometer a bit more. And obviously as of today, it's not really clear how backward compatible this will be or not. So maybe it's good to just wait for this discussion to become a bit more concrete or to settle a bit more on a solution before you start uh, using micro, micro profile in, in the current version, right? And open telemetry looks promising. They have a couple of good approaches, but it's so new that yeah, you, there's no adoption, nobody using it. It's just you know a generic uh, alpha version of the implementation to play with it. Okay, so that is my overview of um, Java metrics libraries. I hope it was useful. And yeah, let's open this uh, talk for questions. Hello? Can I stop sharing? No, I cannot stop sharing. Anyway, is there any moderator who can talk to me? I don't hear anything. <laughs> Silence. Did I mute my microphone or something? Um, hello? Can you try again? Anyone speaking? This is all good, Fabian. We can hear ah, okay. <laughs> now I hear something. Wait. <laughs> Great presentation. Uh, we got a uh, very good overview of different languages. Thank you so Sorry, I think I lost you. I don't hear you anymore. Can you hear me, Fabian? No, no, again. Yeah, now it works again. Okay, could you repeat okay. the question, please? No, no, there is no question. It's just that I felt uh, it was really useful presentation. Actually, I was exploring different metric libraries for my project, and this is the right time I got it. And I think I should go and implement it based on this session and my understanding. Thank you, Thank you very much. That's uh, great to hear. Thanks a lot. It's always a bit weird to, you know, have a presentation just alone in front of your camera. <laughs> so, uh, thanks that you yeah, provide some feedback. <laughs> there, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I got you, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, any questions, anyone? Otherwise, I would say, yeah, have a good rest of the day and a good um, conference. Um, there are some questions in the, in the chat. Okay, I for some reason I ah now I, I see this the chat. Okay. Greetings from Team Console. Hey, greetings back. <laughs> nice. So a nice setup. If I use Docker Compose or test containers, no, I actually just uh, start them manually. And if you look at the repository where I check them in, there's this, you know, just um, where is it? Yeah, whatever just Java minus jar in most cases for, for starting the individual things. So no, no magic here. And also um, um, Prometheus and, and, and Grafana, these are just written in goal and it's just single executables. So I just download them and, and start them They're natively on my laptop. No need to put them in containers for this demo. Um, yeah, 
Prometheus protocol is industry standard. That's actually a good point. I mean, I work for Instana as well, which is kind of a proprietary monitoring tool. And obviously there are so many tools using uh, Prometheus that we support Prometheus protocol as well. Of course, yeah, Datadog supports it, I guess, all the other monitoring tools as well. And so it makes sense, yeah, perfectly. I mean, if, <clears throat> If you have a monitoring tool, chances that it actually understands Prometheus metrics are good. And so if you want to export metrics, you can just export them in Prometheus format and probably you will be like, right? Which library is best for microservices? Yeah, microservices, um, if you write them in Spring Boot or Quarkus at today, as Spring Boot or Quarkus both have micrometer built in, I would say use micrometer. If you want to use something specific, like for example, a specific Prometheus feature that's not supported yet by other libraries, I would go with a Prometheus Java client. If you want to use something that's has best support in Drop Wizard, use that. But yeah, anyway, I mean, if, if you don't know and are just unsure, then have a look, likely your framework ships with micrometer anyway and just use it. Where can we download the source code demo? Here, fstab, that's my GitHub handle, jcon 2021. I can also skip to the initial slide again. It's down here. This is the link. Um, why are the metric values different between the different libraries while they have the same functionality? Now, the values themselves are not different. The only difference is if you calculate, um, if you calculate um, uh, quantiles, depending on, like, if you, if you calculate them from, uh, from histograms, then it's basically a guess. It's an estimation. And depending on how fine-grained your buckets are, the guess is better or not so not so good. So if you use just the default buckets coming from micrometer, you can estimate some some percentiles, but the of, of course they will have a large error probably, right? So, and if you want to <clears throat> get better estimations, then probably it's good to configure buckets yourself that match better what, what the behavior of your system. Um, Fabian. Mm -hmm. If you're, um, you have already stopped sharing your screen, I don't know if you're still showing. Oh, no, I, show thought something. I, I, uh, I thought, hmm, new share. Let's try to share my screen again. I was, I was just, um, is it sharing now? Um, it's sharing now, yeah. But okay. on the, the is it the black screen? screen or do you see the chat? <laughs> uh, I can see on the, uh, on the left of the uh, presentation. Okay, so then I was just going through the chat and reading the, the questions here. So that, okay, so I think my time is almost up. Is there any final question from your side? No? Okay, then thanks a lot for listening. Hope it was helpful. And yeah, have a good uh, rest of the conference. Bye.